Coming in for general speeches. At 4.30 p.m. Eastern, the Senate will take up four judicial nominations. A roll call vote on one of those nominations is scheduled for 5.30. The Senate will come to order. Uh, the chaplain, Dr. Barry Black, will lead the Senate in prayer. Let us pray. O oh God, our Father, take our senators this day and make them what they cannot be without your power. Enlighten their minds so that they will know what is best for the good of our land. Break for them the habits they cannot break. Calm for them the worries they cannot still. Soothe for them the sorrows no human comfort can ease. May they always remember that nothing can separate them from your great love. We pray in your merciful name. Amen. Please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The clerk will read a communication to the Senate. Washington, D.C., December 5, 2011, to the Senate. Under the provisions of Rule 1, Paragraph 3 of the Standing Rules of the Senate, I hereby appoint the Honorable Jeff Bingaman, a senator from the state of New Mexico, to perform the duties of the chair, signed Daniel K. Inouye, President Pro Tempore. President, the Majority Leader is recognized. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Akaka.
terminated? Without objection. Mr. President, today, following later remarks, if any, the Senate will be in morning business until 4.30 today. Following that morning business, the Senate will be in executive session to consider four United States District Judges. At 5.30 today, there will be a roll call vote on confirmation of the Ramos nomination. We hope the rest of the nominations can be confirmed by voice vote. Mr. President, last week, my friend, the Republican leader, tried to convince us Republicans realize it would be disastrous to raise taxes on the middle class. Here on the Senate floor, he quoted half a dozen news reports as evidence Senate Republicans support an extension of payroll tax cuts for 160 million American workers. I said at that time I was skeptical. Skeptical that Republicans really support this tax cut. It turns out I was right. Last Thursday, Republicans shot down Democrats' proposal to cut taxes for middle-class Americans, supposedly on the grounds it raised taxes on the richest of the rich. But, Mr. President, a few minutes later, Republicans all shot down their own proposal, one that they had placed on the Senate floor. It was to extend the payroll tax cuts. It was paid for with their own hand-picked reductions in government spending. Well, they shot that down. They only got 19 votes plus the vote of the co-sponsor. Whatever my friend Senator McConnell may say, it's obvious Republicans just aren't interested in preventing a $1,000 tax increase on nearly every family in this nation from taking effect on January 1st. But Democrats will not relent on keeping taxes low for the middle class. So today, Senator Casey will unveil a modified version of the payroll tax cut proposal he introduced last week. Like our previous proposal, this scaled back version will cut taxes for 160 American workers. That is 160 million, Mr. President, workers, including 1.2 million Nevadans. This proposal will allow the average family to keep an extra $1,500 to spend on necessities next year. And like our previous proposal, it won't add a penny to the deficit. It will be fully paid for with a mixture of spending cuts Republicans have already agreed to and a tiny, tiny surtax on the top two-tenths of 1% 1 of American taxpayers. Every spending reduction in the proposal was agreed to by a bicameral group of Republicans on the Super Committee, so we know they support these cuts, or they should support these cuts. And in an effort to make our proposal more palatable to Republicans, we've conceded significantly to cut the tax on income above a million dollars and make it temporary. Democrats know how important extending and expanding the payroll tax cut is to working families. It's also important to our economy. Economists of every political <coughs> excuse me, political persuasion agree. If Republicans block this proposal, raising taxes on American families by $1,000 next month, will have an immediate negative impact on our economy. It will halt our single, it will halt very singularly our still fragile recovery in its tracks and drag us back into a recession. We all know Congress can't afford to play chicken with the economy. That's why Democrats are committed to passing this tax cut. Republicans need to be prepared to meet us part way. We're offering a serious proposal with meaningful concessions, including spending cuts, to which Republicans have already agreed. And the scaled back temporary tax on the richest Americans, a group with an average income of $3 million a year, is also a sincere attempt to get Republicans on board to pass what they say they want to do. We know a few of them said publicly that they're open to asking millionaires and billionaires to contribute to our economic recovery. I was happy to see those press reports. I only hope they have the courage to vote accordingly, as one Republican did last Thursday. One Republican voted the right way. I repeat, Mr. President, this is a serious proposal, and Republicans should take it seriously. Here's why. Americans, regardless of political affiliation, say they wholeheartedly support Democrats' plan to cut taxes for middle-class families. 58 percent of Republicans agree across this country. We should extend, they agree that we should extend and expand payroll tax cuts for 160 million American workers. Further, Americans overwhelmingly support our proposal to ask millionaires and billionaires to pay their fair share to help this country thrive. Americans from every corner of the country in every walk of life agree, Democrats, Republicans, and Independents. Ask if they support a plan that would require people making more than a million dollars a year to contribute a little more to ensure this country's economic success. The re results were decisive. 75%, 
Three quarters of Americans said yes. Wealthy Americans agree. Two thirds of people making more than a million a year said they would gladly contribute more. A supermajority of Republicans agree, with two thirds supporting the idea. And even a majority, 52% of members of the Tea Party agree. Seems the only place in the country you can't find a majority of Republicans willing to speak up for shared sacrifice are Republicans in the United States Senate. Republicans across the country support our plan and the way it's paid for. Republicans in Congress dismiss it at their peril. I repeat, Republicans dismiss this at their peril. The American people are watching what my Republican colleagues will do. Mr. President, would the President be uh, so kind as to introduce the business of the day? Uh, under the previous order, the leadership time is reserved, and under the previous order, the Senate will be in a period of morning business until 4.30, with senators permitted to speak therein for up to 10 minutes each. Okay, the clerk will call the roll. Mr. Kaka. Well, we heard Senate Majority Leader Reid uh, saying that Senator Casey will introduce a revised payroll tax cut plan today. The Associated Press writes that Democratic officials say the new payroll tax cut plan drops President Obama's proposal to award the tax cut to employers, in addition to every worker who draws a paycheck. The move would bring the cost of the payroll tax cut, uh, the centerpiece of the president's jobs agenda, down to $185 billion. Uh, president Obama's original proposal was estimated to cost $265 billion. President Obama is speaking right now from the White House briefing room, urging Republicans in Congress to pass the bill, just like we heard uh, from Senate Majority Leader Reid a few minutes ago. You can see the president right now on C-SPAN.
Here in the Senate at 4.30 Eastern Time, senators are expected to take up four judicial nominations. A roll call vote on one of those nominations is scheduled for 5.30. More nominations are later in the week with another judicial nomination tomorrow and possible debate on President Obama's nominee to head the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, Richard Cordray.
In speaking from the White House about 10 minutes ago, President Obama said that Congress needs to extend a payroll tax cut, saying the economic recovery is still fragile and middle class families need the money. Politico writes that House Republicans and Senate Democrats are on a collision course over extending the tax break as the two sides intensify their legislative gamesmanship ahead of a crucial year-end deadline. Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid plans to unveil a new $180 billion plan to extend the, the tax break that Democrats say will be scaled back in order to win Republican support. Meanwhile, House Republicans will unveil a broader $200 billion plan that would be largely paid for by cuts to Medicare benefits given to richer Americans and pay cuts to federal workers. That in Politico. Debate here in the Senate on four judicial nominations is expected at 4.30 Eastern.